We need to have a discussion about the new Mac Mini because over a month after its initial release, I'm fairly convinced that this is the best product Apple has released, not just this year, but in quite some time. In this video, I'll be breaking down exactly who I think this computer is for and also give some of my real world use cases that this powerful little machine is capable of. But just jumping right in, let's talk about the hardware, specifically with a focus on the size. I don't wanna go too deep here since a lot of the content around launch covered the hardware really well, but what I do wanna to try to convey for you in this video is exactly how small this thing actually is. For direct comparison, here is my M2 Max Mac Studio, and this is the new Mac Mini. Yeah, it's tiny. Here it is next to my 14 inch MacBook Pro, next to an iPhone 16 Pro Max. Heck, this thing is basically smaller than an Xbox controller. It's honestly wild. One design choice that people online will have you believe is the worst thing that Apple has ever done is the fact that the power button is under the back corner but honestly, there is no problem with this. It will probably never bother you in your regular day-to-day -day use. An actual downside for me, however, is the fact that there is no SD card slot. Is this really a pro feature still in 2025? Personally, I feel like there's no good reason that there shouldn't be an SD card slot, but honestly, that's one of my only gripes with this entire computer. Apple switching this to a shrunken down version of the Mac Studio versus the old flat design of the Mac Mini is a really nice change in my opinion, and I love of how this computer looks on my desk. Now, beyond just the amazing compact form factor, we need to talk about a few of the essential apps that will be living on this Mac and used on a regular basis. One of the most important things to be mindful of when you're purchasing a base model device like this is keeping your computer free of clutter. So that's where the sponsor of this video, Clean My Mac, comes in. Clean My Mac is an essential care-centric app that has everything you could possibly need to keep your machine running at peak performance. And as a fan of fun user interfaces, I feel like they nailed that here too. On the dashboard, you have several options for managing the various tools built into the app, but the smart care feature is able to do a complete scan of your computer to generate a list of actions that you can take to get the most out of your machine. They also have a feature called Clean My Mac Menu that's super useful since it lets you get an instant look at key system settings, CPU loads, memory usage, and all of this is updating in real time. I honestly think a tool like this is an absolute must if you decide to go with a base model Mac since the hard drives are gonna fill up pretty quickly with programs and system clutter, so this at least helps keep everything clean and tidy, and it's also super easy to use. Clean My Mac is available for purchase on the MacPaw website, the Mac App Store, and on Setup. And if you use the link in the description, you'll also get a seven day free trial. So thank you again to Clean My Mac for sponsoring this section of the video. Now the next app that is an absolute essential for me on pretty much every device that I use is an app called My Mind. You may remember this one from my Hidden Gems of the App Store series, and the episode that I did featuring My Mind went absolutely crazy. People love using this app. The idea here is you create an account and anytime you come across a photo, a product, a quote, or really anything that you'd want to remember for later, you simply just save it to my mind. You can think of this almost as the bookmark function that you'd see on social media, except it's all bundled into one beautifully designed app that you'll actually wanna go back and see later. You can create organized lists called spaces for groups of content that you wanna curate. And my favorite feature is the app generates color hex codes for every image you save. It's really, really good. I also love Love that there's no social media components here, so everything that you save syncs across all of your devices and is basically just a highly curated list of all of the things that inspire you most. Now, another app I've been loving for a while on my MacBook is a very simple app called Notch Note. This one does cost money to use, but the idea here is that you convert the notch area on the MacBook into a sort of quick access menu for controlling playback media, seeing your calendar, amongst a few other things. And it honestly works really well for desktop-based Macs too, since you can simply hide the notch when you don't need it, and then when you do, you hover the mouse over it to bring the section down. My absolute favorite part of this one, however, is the file tray feature, where you can click and drag any file to instantly airdrop with another device or store it in the tray for use later. Utilities like this one can go a long way for convenience sake, and it feels like it should just be part of macOS as is. So despite the fact that it costs a little bit of money, it definitely adds to the macOS experience. The next essential app that I'm downloading day one on any computer that I purchase is going to be Notion. Starting January of this year, I switched all of my content, planning, scripting, project management, literally all of it over to Notion, and it's been great so far for running my content business. Eventually, I do plan on putting out some dedicated 
content that breaks down exactly how I use Notion in my day-to-day -day use, but until then, I highly recommend checking out my friend Edward Lee's channel. He recently put out some videos on his specific Notion workflow, so I'll make sure to link those videos in the description below. Definitely go and check them out and show him some love. And of course, I had to throw a fun one in this list, so if you're in a festive mood, I found a really simple app from a dev I follow on threads called Festivitas. The app literally adds a string of blinking lights to your Mac menu bar or dock, and as you mouse over the dock, they magnify in a really satisfying way. You can dial in how fast you want the lights to blink, the colors, the size. It's honestly pretty flexible for such a simple idea. I'll have a link to this one down below if you want to check it out. I think solo devs doing fun and simple ideas like this should be celebrated whenever possible. Now, let's talk about Apple intelligence, because I think it's one of the biggest and best selling points of this new computer, but maybe not quite for the reason you might think. Now, sure, the initial waves of features like text tools, the new Siri, notification summary, stuff like that's really convenient to have, but so far, I'm not super convinced that these are gonna be all that impactful for the everyday person. Instead, I think that we need to celebrate Apple intelligence for bringing one key feature to every Apple device that it is supported on, and that is 16 gigabytes of RAM. That single spec bump turns this Mac mini into one of the best valued computers you can even buy right now, at least for the base model, that is. I think it's still too early to say whether Apple intelligence is going to be the big game-changing revolutionary feature that Apple claims it will be, but at least so far, the ripple effects of them adopting it across their board is already impacting their product lineups in a really meaningful way. I'll have a lot more to say about Apple intelligence in an eventual longer term review, but for now, it's not a huge part of my day-to-day -day life. Now, gaming is a really interesting category for the Mac mini, and it's an area that has never really been a strong point of the Mac. There's still a long ways off from being able to compete with a custom build that can run AAA titles on Mac's graphics, but this small little box can run a lot of really fun games through Apple Arcade. Some of the stuff I've been playing on this during my review period have been the new Sonic Dream Team game, NBA 2K25 Arcade Edition, and Bellatro Plus, quite possibly my favorite game of this year. Pairing the Mac with an Xbox controller via Bluetooth is super easy to do, and pretty much all of the controls work straight out of the box. And at times, this computer almost feels like it's a compact console alternative, and I feel like as more games come to this platform, you'll see more and more people using it this way. Long story short, don't sleep on gaming on the Mac. It's still got some way to go, but it is a lot better than it used to be. One last fascinating use case I wanted to cover with the Mac mini is how insane this computer is when paired with the Apple Vision Pro. Just look at this. You can actually fit it inside the Vision Pro carrying case, so if you want a desktop experience anywhere you go, this just works. Combine that with the fact that Apple recently dropped a new wide and ultra-wide virtual display option, this means you can have a huge workspace to get your work done, and all you need is this small computer and the headset. It's actually wild how these can both be argued as one of the most revolutionary products that Apple has released in a long time, and they're essentially at opposite sides of the pricing scale. Of course, the MacBook still exists and is going to be the main way that people take their work with them on the go, but this combo is extremely fun and for the right person is going to be an amazing experience. So who is this for? Who should buy the 2024 Mac mini? For the vast majority of people out there, this is the new default that I will recommend for a desktop computer. The price to performance is fantastic. It's super versatile for just about any workspace. And unless you know you're gonna be pushing it to its absolute limits, it is a really powerful machine. I specifically think that the base model is the one that I'd almost always recommend you buy since Apple starts charging insane prices for their storage and chip upgrades. So you'd probably just be better off buying some external hard drives and saving the money on the upfront cost. But I love that Apple made this computer and I hope that as many people as possible can experience exactly how good this thing is. They did something really special with this one.